Think Tech Hawaii. Civil engagement lives here. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the Prince of Investing here live on thinktechhawaii.com and also wherever you may catch us around the globe, even though we're live in Hawaii. I'm coming live all the way from the beautiful state of Denver, Colorado. Don't forget to hit that like, subscribe, comment, share button, leave some comments, all of the great stuff like that. And as always, I don't have a lot of time, but I definitely know you guys and girls don't have a lot of time, so we're going to jump straight into it. So in this video or podcast, or however you may catch this, we're going to talk about the Fed interest rates, the Fed interest rate hikes, and how may they affect you. I know you guys saw this in the description box, so we're going to jump straight into it. So what we're going to talk about, I'm going to talk about four ways that it can affect you. We're going to talk about four ways that it can affect you, one, two, three, four. Then we're going to talk about the interest rates, why they raise the interest rates, ways you can invest to kind of profit from the interest rate, and what does an interest rate tell you, and who is doing this, and is it a magic man behind the scenes? So let's get straight to it. Number one, everybody, just about every American, it's the American way to have a credit card, right? And once you have a credit card, you know, we all have an interest rate. Your interest rate may be 10%. Some people may have 15%. Some people got 20 Some people got 30 The interest rate depends on your credit score, right? So your credit score, uh, so uh, essentially your interest rate can change. It's variable, right? It's variable. It can depend on your credit, the, the bank interest rates, whatever you may have set up with your credit card. But most credit cards have a variable interest rate. Now you got to think about it. As the uh, federal government raises its interest rates, what the, what happens to your credit card interest rates? Boom, it can raise as well, right? Because where does the federal, not the federal government, but where does your bank get? Where does your bank get its money from? It gets its money from Fed. The interest rates that they're messing with are moving up and down. It is the fee that they charge banks. So it's common sense. If you buy something for five dollars, what are you going to sell it for? Six, seven, eight, right? If you buy something for ten dollars, what are you going to sell it for? Eleven, twelve, thirteen. And we all know how to base the concept of how a bank is set up, right? A bank is, um, you know, they they pretty much take your money and lend it out to somebody else for a higher price. When you when it's sitting in your savings account, they give you one percent, and that's been modest. Some accounts give you one percent. They give you one percent, then they take your money, then they loan it to someone else for ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen percent, and they take the difference. That's how a bank works. So the bank is getting its money from the federal government. Whatever price is passed to to the bank, the bank is going to pass to you. So if the bank has a three percent interest rate, it's going to probably charge you four percent, right? If the bank has a 10% interest rate, you guys catch my drift, right? So if you have a credit card and the interest rates, if the banks are being charged more for money, that can affect your credit card, right? Because your credit card has a variable rate. You know, for everybody out there that carries a credit card that has one, just about all Americans do have some form of credit, but um, credit card, um, that's one thing you can affect. <laughs> Number two, the mortgage rates. You know, the mortgage interest rates. You know, your mortgage interest rate, you know, the one that you go out and you decide to buy a house, if all my people out there who are deciding to buy a house, if you buy a house, um, you're borrowing money from the bank. Where does the bank get his money from? Where does the lender get his money from? You're right. You guessed it. You guys are geniuses already from the federal government. So if the federal government interest rates goes up, it can affect your mortgage. That's number two. Number three. Student loans. How many of you guys out there have a student loan? You know, don't, you know, for people out there who are going to school or looking to inspire to go to school, if you go to school, you know, let's say you don't have the money and you want to take a class and the class costs 800 bucks, you have the option of putting it on a credit card, taking out a personal loan, or getting a student loan. Most people like to take the student loan route because the student loan route, and if you're smart, don't do something dumb like I've done in the past. Don't pay for a class on a credit card. It's stupid. Reason why it's stupid because a credit card has the highest interest rate. That's what, 10%, 15%, right? And you might as well go through the process, get a student loan that's going to charge you 1% or 2%. So you're better off with paying a student loan back that way. But the thing about it, once you get a student loan, you know, if you put it on a credit card, maybe you had a possibility of clearing it off in a bankruptcy if you ever filed bankruptcy. But 
you see, you know, you can't wipe off student loans. Pretty much they got you for life, and they can garnish your check behind federal student loans. They can do all types of things behind federal student loans. So um, that's the pros and the cons. You put on a credit card, that's 10, 15, 20% for that class. By the time you pay it off, you're going to pay two, three times more for it. You guys know how that go. Or you can get a student loan that may charge you one, two, three percent. But when you borrow money from Uncle Sam for education, we all heard the stories, right? But that's the pros and the cons. So that's number three. Student loans, because uh, student loans is a federal government loan. Federal government loan, unless you go get a private student loan. Even if a private student loan or a federal government loan, because all banks are work up under the feds. People like to call them the feds, federal government, right? And uh, that's why um, you always it's a big deal when the chairman of the Federal Reserve talks. So that's number three. Number number three. Number four. Auto loans, cars. How many of us borrow cars? Now, if you already bought a car, you got a fixed interest rate, you're good. But if you're someone who's looking to buy a car, then, you know, the government, where does the bank get their money from? That's another thing that everybody I see walking around in life. So that's four things. Number one, credit card. Number two, mortgage, more, uh, credit card rate, mortgage interest rates, student loan interest rate, and auto loan interest rates that can be affected by the federal government interest rate hike. Now, every time the Fed talks, the investing world gets quiet. When it was Jane Yellen, they used to call her Mother Goose. Mother Goose. You know, she was a lady, for example, so they used to call her Mother Goose. And with Mother Goose, whatever she says, it's uh, whatever she says, people listen to it big time. They're like, oh, wow, the government is they're raising interest rates. Because when interest rates go up, um, now the people may buy less houses because people are not getting interest rates are not as well. So it may cool down the market. It can cool down the stock market. For prime example, where do companies get their money? As money get tight, as money becomes tighter, it's harder to borrow because when interest rates go up, they pass on those high interest rates to the to the bank. The bank has less money. So the bank has less money, it's tighter with lending money out. Money becomes tighter to lend it out. Companies can't borrow like they used to. They can't create more products. They can't have, you know, it slows down the expansion, which inversely cools off the stock market. That's why people pay attention to it, especially Wall Street. Everybody's glued into their ears. Everybody always talking about the federal government interest rate hikes because they understand the economy. As the government raises the interest rate, it could potentially cool off the stock market, which is very, I won't say very bullish, but it's pretty bullish right now. So, um, that's why economists pay attention to it. And I just gave you four reasons why you should pay attention to it. Your credit card, your mortgage, your student loans, and what else? Auto loans. Those are four things I can just think of off the top of my head. Now, the thing about it, as now we spoke about it being from a consumer, everyday person talking about your student loans. Then we spoke about it being from the business side of the house. If you are a business, you have a revolving line of credit and you need to borrow money to uh, purchase, you need $50,000 to make shoes so you can sell these shoes to other people. So if you don't qualify for the loan or they say, hey, well, we're not going to give you the $50,000 because, you know, we have raised our requirements for you to borrow this money. Now you can't make the shoes. You can't make the shoes. You don't hire people or you can't expand all of the good stuff like that. It slows down production. And it's, it's done in that way because why would you want to cool off the stock market? You want to cool off the stock market because you want inflation, but you don't want too much inflation. What is too much inflation? Hyperinflation, right? So you don't want too much inflation because we can go into hyperinflation. What I mean by hyperinflation, just imagine a world where everybody has a million dollars, but a loaf of bread costs $1,000, right? That's hyperinflation, where there's just too much money in the economy, too much money going around, things like that. Then if you go to reverse way, it's called deflation. So you don't want deflation. You don't want hyperinflation. You kind of want inflation to grow at a nice 2 to 4%, right? Now, and that's what the federal government does. They raise the interest rates. to They think the market is getting too hot. They, you know, the economy is getting a little hot. They raise interest rates. When they think the economy is getting cold in 2008, they lowered interest rates. 2008, when the market crashed, they lowered interest rates to stimulate the economy, to make money easy, to push money into the economy, right? So that's why you see a lot of people buy houses, business, start to borrow money, stuff like that. So those are the ways the federal government um, handles interest rates that affect the whole world. And that's why you always hear people listening, oh, federal government, 
uh, raise interest rates. Interest rates stay the same. Now, on the investor side of the house, well, let's talk about why do they change interest rates or what sparks don't want to change interest rates. Things that they're looking at. They're looking at the stock market. How is the stock market performing? Is the stock market going up? Is the stock market going down? Is the stock market staying? Is it stagnant or whatever, right? So the stock market continues to go up, 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 up. That could be an indication of a strong economy. And, you know, that may be a way to clue them in to uh, raise the interest rates. Then another thing is unemployment. What is unemployment? Um, is unemployment high? Unemployment low, right? Um, is unemployment growing? We had an all-time low. I don't know if it's an all-time low, but we're pretty low on unemployment. And so that tells me that people are working. People are not filing for unemployment. They may be, now it doesn't tell you if these people are uh, underemployed, right? I don't know of an index that tell you like, hey, people are underemployed. Like uh, take someone like myself, right? Um, I have an MBA. And let's say if I was working for $10 an hour at Subway, um, am I employed? Yes. But am I underemployed? Yes. Right? So I haven't heard of an index tracking people that are underemployed. You know, I've been to restaurants plenty of time and seen people with college degrees that are, you know, servers. And, you know, you think that, hey, well, they went to school. Should they be doing X, Y, Z? They're underemployed. Now, uh, so they look at employment. They look at um, employment, how many people are working, bullish markets. They look at um, how many people out there or, you know, they look at inventory, things that are growing the economy. The leading indicators that I spoke about that I made a video about and made a podcast about as well, about they're looking at ways to how many people are building houses, you know, things to say, hey, the economy is doing well. And they look at the economy is doing well. Those are the ways, those are the things that make them raise and lower interest rates. Now, now we're going, we spoke about the four ways it can affect you. We spoke about the... Um, what we, we spoke about why will somebody raise it, how it affects you. Now we're going to talk about uh, ways you can invest and what does it mean to an investor. As an investor, how I just spoke about it, well, with their economic data, I'm not saying they're correct or that they're right, but in nine times out of 10, they're privileged to more information than the average investor. And they're looking at their leading indicators. They're trying to see where the economy is going so they can adjust interest rates because we live in a very low interest rate society. So they look at, hey, well, uh, interest rates are kind of low. Let's pitch into our economy. Do we think our economy is going up? Do we think it's going down? Do we think it's kind of stacking? They decided to raise interest rates, meaning they have a bright outlook on our future. Now, as an investor, what does that mean? Prince, that means that we're probably going to go into – um, maybe for the next quarter or the next month or at least the next quarter, that probably means that we're probably going to go into a bull market, right? Um, you know, record this. This today is September. It is uh, September 28, 29, and we're going to see October, November, December. Come December, if the stock market is going to be higher and lower than it is today. And today, S&P 500 is about 29 uh the S&P 500 is about 29,000, um, right? Um, hit all-time highs, and we're going to see how it's going to do in three months. As an investor, what can you do? One, you could slide into the index or some of your favorite equities, stocks. Two, you could get more riskier and buy, um, um, you know, leverage ETFs that track the S&P 500, like XPL, um, Dow, I can't remember what it is, DOW or whatnot. Those are the ones that you can look into. And also, if you were extremely um, risky, you can purchase call options on the index. Now, granted, I'm not sitting here telling anybody here that it should do any of this. I'm just educating you guys the way people look at things and say, hmm, well, if the federal government, if you believe in the federal government, they're saying the economy is doing good and it's going to do better and for the next quarter and it done done good this past quarter. And I give you guys a little hint. Did you read the LEI, the leading um, from the conference board? I read them, and they were the economy was doing pretty good in August, so that's led to an interest rate hike, and that could be a good indicator of going into the holiday season. Well, as we see this going into the holiday season, how much is going to be done, right? 
how much not how much is going to be done, but we're looking at how much is going to be how much the market could go up. Those are ways you can look to probably profit from what the federal government is putting out. So right now, interest rates are at 2.25, right? They only put them up by 25%. Usually when they move them, they move them about 25%. And since I've been here, it's kind of been going, you know, up, 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 you know, or whatnot. So those are the ways that uh, I want you guys to look at it and to think about it, right? So every time you get a federal government, come December, the Federal Reserve Chair, they're going to sit down, Third year reserve chair is someone who's appointed by the president and, you know, approved by the Senate. But the Federal Reserve Chair, they're going to sit down. They're going to look at the economy. They're going to try to figure out where the economy is going. So they keep, they got three options, lower interest rates, keep them the same, or raise them. And when they raise them, that means they have a bright outlook on the economical future. So they take in their data, and, um, you know, they're usually pretty uh, smart people, but nobody knows the world of investing because if we did, you know, Everybody would be, you know, it wouldn't be investing because everybody has it figured out. But sometimes you get some right, you get some wrong. But these are tools to put in your toolbox. That's what the federal government is saying. The chair of the federal government is saying, what are they doing with interest rates, right? What are they watching? Why are they raising interest rates? And what does raising interest rates mean? But now you know that. You know why interest rates go up and down. You know how often they meet every quarter. You know how they can affect your personal life. You know how it affects an investor. And you also know ways that you can um, um, profit this and be able to educate somebody else, right? So I think that concludes us for today. You know, it was a great episode to talk about the federal government interest rates. Stay out for the next Federal Reserve hike, which is coming in December, and, and it happens every quarter. And um, watch out. Oh, well, 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 before we get out of here, I want to tell you some ways that you guys can kind of um, look at things. If Federal Reserve interest rates go up or down, depending on what it is, you could refinance your mortgage. You could take, you know, if you had a mortgage, you could refinance your mortgage if you get a higher or lower interest rate, depending on what situation is going on. Credit card, you can move your money over to, you know, Pay off your balance of your credit card at a zero percent and get a new one. You can kind of do that that type of shindig, right? Um, if you are looking to get an auto loan, if you're looking to purchase a house and you see interest rates are going up, 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 you may want to make a move on a house if you're in the real estate market. So all type of ways you can kind of finagle that that information, but these are more tools for your toolbox. And as you hear things go across, you see how things line up and understand how they affect you, the economy, your money, and what you're doing, your investing strategy, and ways that you can um, profit yourself. But without further ado, um, thank you guys for everybody that has tuned in. Next Saturday, October 6th, I will be returning home, and I'll be doing a book signing on October 6th at the Burke County Library for my Wesley Learn series. Um, then what else I got planned? I don't like to talk about my future plans, but that's my next one, October 6th. If you're in Waynesboro, Georgia, back in my hometown, stop by and say hi. I'll be down there both saying hey and all of the great stuff like that. And I'll just keep it moving. But always, oh, and thank you guys for all the congratulations on the accredited financial counselor. Um, you know, I finished the certification in, and I'm on to the next one. So uh, thank you. But until the next video, podcast, cartoon, or whatever else you see me do crazy around the globe, peace, be safe, I'm out, and you.